you are worthy God amen why he is worthy can we have few of this worthiness in our mind what is appealing to you that's important what is appealing to you in Jesus that he is worthy for your worship to follow him to believe him to trust him why he is worthy you see we say big words but we want to have the substantiation data to support that why he's worthy for you I'm going to tell you why he's worthy for me the song said he has to be crowned but on the Golgotha on that mount he didn't wear a crown of gold and pearls he wore a crown of thorns can you imagine the king of kings the lord of lords didn't have any pearl no gold no silver no other precious metals on his crown but he had the crown of thorns why for you for you for you and for us all is that it that makes him worthy yes it is think about he was laying his hands on the cross not because he was led by the pilot army by the Roman uh, Empire army no he said I'm gonna give my life on my good account on my good will not because he was forced not because he was a corner and he had to do it no he did it out of loves for you and for me amen is he worthy amen and I can go on and on and on why he's worthy when we say you are worthy Jesus we're looking at the crown of thorns we're looking at his hands to be pierced we're looking that they um, pull his beard uh, he mocked him he uh, said all kind of bad words to the king of kings to the lord of lords to the creator he created you and you are in his image i am in his image amen 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 you see on sunday we had the message and the theme was stand firm right stand firm everybody believes that everybody remembers that now that's the what what we need to do to stand firm the Holy Spirit led me tonight to talk about how you see we got the message we got the what what we need to do to stay firm or to stand firm amen now tonight I would like to go over with you how we can stay firm how we can stand firm how you see none of us nobody of us has the power to stand firm not you not me none of us the bible said without him we can do nothing we can do nothing how we can stay firm how we can stand firm for him you see uh, right after the holy spirit 
uh, right af uh, after Pentecost, right after the pouring of the Holy Spirit in abundance um, in the Jerusalem, there was a few days after. The Bible doesn't say how many days. Peter and John was going to the temple. And at the entrance of the temple, they saw a lamb or lame or a, a para, uh, pleading, you know, a, a person that couldn't walk, couldn't move. Right? It's different translation, different words for that. A person that has no power in his feet, maybe in his arms. He was just laying down and waiting for people to give any donation for his uh, life, you know, to, to buy food, to buy the essentials, right? And Peter and John was going to the temple to pray. And he asking him or them, can you give something to me? And the Peter and John, both of them in accord, they said, I don't have silver, I don't have gold, but I have something. I have something. And I want that something for every one of us tonight to be poured here. I believe that the Holy Spirit can be poured tonight as well as Sunday, as any day of the week. There is one thing, Jesus, we are ready to pour more power. The Holy Spirit, the, your love, your, 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 your knowledge on us. Oh, Jesus, we are ready to receive the power of your Holy Spirit. And he said, we don't have gold, we don't have silver, but we have something. We have the name of Jesus, of the Nazareth. Every one of us has that powerful name. And I want to say, when we say the name of Jesus, his name is power. His name is healing. His name is knowledge. His name is uh, breaking all the bondage. His name is wonderful. Oh, tonight we want his name to be poor, to be placed upon every one of us. And if you're going to say, and if you are ready to receive, say, Lord, I want your name upon my head, upon my soul, upon my heart, upon my whole being. I need you, Jesus. I need you. I need you tonight. You see, we, are, we were told to stay firm, to stand firm. And we're going to ask tonight how we can stay firm. You see, when you go to your university, to your high school, to your place of work, you encounter hardship. You encounter opposition. You encounter people with unbeliefs. Uh, you encounter people that mock God and say bad words about God. How are you going to stay firm? You see, Peter and John, were different people before the Holy Spirit, before the baptism of the Holy Spirit. You know what the Bible said? The Bible said that Peter was afraid not of a man or, or an adult, uh, you know, uh, guard, if you will, but a woman. A woman was asking him, a servant woman was asking him, Peter, you were with Jesus. And Peter says, no, I don't know him. That's the same Peter. He was same age. From that, um, you know, account, from that, uh, um, you know, um, situation, and this situation that is happening here was probably uh, 50, uh, 60 days now, 50 is from the resurrection to 
to the Pentecost, right? This is after Pentecost, maybe in another few days. And few days before the, pen, the resurrection was the, the you know, uh, when Jesus was uh, arrested and stuff like that. So we're talking about two months here, roughly two months from this account and the other account. Now, here, Peter is emboldened. Peter is uh, having the power of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And I'm going to tell you tonight, none of us, you can read the Bible, you can know the Bible by memorizing the whole verses. If the Holy Spirit doesn't give you power, there is no power. You see, I can put all the wires in this room. I can put all the uh, equipments in this room. But if I don't switch the power on at the circuit breaker, will be, everything will be dead, right? The same thing is with the Holy Spirit. You can have a lot of knowledge. You can uh, know a lot of things. But without the Holy Spirit, there is no power. You see, Peter and John, when they saw this person that is staying down on his um, mat, was, uh, his bed was basically a mat, uh, was basically a, a blankie, if you will. So he was staying down, and Peter was saying, look at us. Look precisely to us. We have something for you. I have something for you tonight. I have the name of Jesus for you. And we can call upon the name of Jesus. And tonight we can receive power in his, uh, uh, in his name, in this name, in, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, hallelujah. You see... None of the servants of Jesus, without power, they couldn't walk. They couldn't go further. They couldn't conquer the world. You see, today in the leadership seminars, they said, even though you don't believe in Jesus as the Son of God, just to see how he organized this enterprise, they call this enterprise, you see they conquer the world. Now if you put Jesus and the Holy Spirit and the divine power, you see we, don't, uh, we just don't conquer the world by numbers. We conquer the world by power. People when they speak the name of Jesus and they are baptized with the Holy Spirit, they have powers. Amen, amen, amen. You see, I want to go a little bit about this power. Some people say, well, this power was only one time, was only for one uh, period of time in, in the Bible, and it's not today. And uh, was happened once, and uh, it's not going to be repeated, and so on. You know what the Bible said? The Bible said this, the Holy Spirit and the baptism of the Holy Spirit is promised by the Father. Jesus said, this is promised by the Father. You see, the baptism of the Holy Spirit is promised not by an angel, not by an apostle, not by a prophet. It's, um, it's promised by the Father, by the Creator. Number two, the baptizer, again, is not a, an angel, is not a prophet, is not an apostle. It is Jesus Christ. And the power is not the power of a prophet, is not the power of an angel. The power is the third person of the divinity, is the Holy Spirit. Amen? Hallelujah, hallelujah. You see, the promise is from the Father. The baptizer is, the Holy, uh, is, the, is Jesus Christ, the Son of God. And the power that we're supposed to receive is nothing else 
but the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah, hallelujah. You see, to get power and to stay firm, the Holy Spirit first is giving you the power to obey the word. A lot of times we think, I cannot obey. Uh, it's too, uh, too hard for me. It's too difficult for me. Um, is, is, uh, it, 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 I need that so many, uh, uh, you know, uh, stretches or uh, so many, uh, uh, you know, uh, reminders and so many things so I can obey the word of God. I'm going to tell you this. When the Holy Spirit is in you and you let him work in you, in your heart, in your soul, it's a joy to obey the word of God. It's a joy. You see, when your best friend is telling you something, it's a joy to support him. It's a joy to help him. It's a joy to, to be in, uh, in uh, his companion, right? Because he's your best friend. The same thing applied to families and, and so on, right? Let alone when Jesus is pouring the Holy Spirit in you. It's a joy to obey the word of God. Because without obedience of the word of God, there is no power. There is no power. You see, uh, these uh, apostles, when they received the word of God, they didn't talk about history. They didn't talk about Old Testament. On the Pentecost, when the Holy Spirit was poured down, they speak about Jesus. They speak about resurrection. They speak about the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. Hallelujah. You see, the baptizer poured the Holy Spirit. When the Holy Spirit comes, he's not talking about any other subject, any other part of the Bible, but he's talking the Son of God, the, the King of Kings. That's how the whole Bible, it's uh, glued together, it's uh, uh, united together. When the Holy Spirit comes, it's going to reveal more about Jesus in your heart. Amen, amen, amen. You see, um, there is, uh, there is uh, when, you know, when you kind uh, love the word of God, when you kind obey the word of God, you know what's happening there? Repentance. You know what uh, Peter said? Repent and convert. Repent and convert. What the, what the repent means? Means, you know, Jesus, let's say one thing tonight. And maybe every one of you, any one of us has something. Let's start with this. Jesus I want to repent from wasting my time. Maybe you don't do something wrong, but you're just wasting your time. In other words, you're killing your time by doing non-important things. Let's say tonight, Jesus, my life is precious. Every day that I got from you, is a gift from you. I want to spend my time from now on with things that are valuable, with things that make your kingdom grow, that for things that make me grow, make me know more, make me to be strong, stronger in you. Jesus, help me with one thing tonight. And let the Holy Spirit talk to you. Let the Holy Spirit speak to you tonight. What you need to repent from. What you need, what things that you are 
um, you, you have, uh, how I can say, you, you, you have uh, something that you regret. Oh, Jesus, I regret for this, for that, for this, for that. Oh, how many things we can regret. And when we regret and we want to change, then the Holy Spirit can get hold of us. Hallelujah, hallelujah. You see, a lot of times we want to change the neighbor. We want to change our brother, our sister, um, in the church or in the family or our uh, uh, things that are close to us. You know what? We cannot change no one, but we can change ourselves. We can change ourselves. We can say, Lord, tonight I want to change this thing. I want to change this situation in my life. Help me with this. I want, uh, I regret that I waste my time. I regret for this, for that, for that, for how many things you can regret. And I want to change. And after this, Peter and John, after this miracle, you know what happened? Persecution. Now, uh, uh, most of you know that we have a lot of resistance from agnostics, from atheists, that they said miracles is irrational. Miracles cannot happen. That's nothing wrong than say miracles cannot happen or miracles are irrational. I want to say that miracles are rational. When we discover the laws uh, of this nature, that means we know the repetability, the, we know the order of these natural laws around us. But when we see a miracle, we know that somebody intervened in these natural things. You see, our universe is an open system, not a closed system. What that means? God is outside the universe. God, God is outside time. God is outside energy. God is out, outside material things. So, so God is an agent, uh, we can say, that is outside the universe. And he can intervene in the universe anytime he wants. He put the order in the, in the universe. He put the order in all the uh, constellation, in all the galaxy. He put this order, right? And he can intervene to change that order for his glory, for his glory. So the miracles can happen. It's rational and it's not... A, um, um, a contradiction of the natural laws that we know as we know. Now, when, when God is doing a miracle, he's doing for his glory. He's doing for his glory. God is not doing shows. God is not doing things for people to wonder and say, wow. No. When God has a plan... God is in control and he can do miracles today as well. Hallelujah. May the Lord do miracles tonight. May the Lord do miracles in everybody's heart, in everybody's soul, in our mind, in our uh, outside um, uh, life, if you will, in our relationship, in everything that we need. May God do his miracles for his Glory, amen, amen. After this person that was without power in his legs, in his hands, he was very sick. After he got up from his bed, from his mat, all people saw that. You know how, for how many years he was sick? For 40 years. Not one, not two, not ten. 40 years. He was sick even before he was born. He was born like that. 
and all the people in Jerusalem knew about this person. He was the beggar at the entrance, right? So when Jesus healed him and he jumped up and down, he was praising the Lord. He was going in the temple. The priest, the rulers, the scribes, the Sadducees, they said, oh, what happened? What this is happening? Why this is happening? And they said, because Jesus Christ was raised from dead. God was raising him from dead. You see, in the, uh, when people talk about, uh, when people are full of the Holy Spirit, they talk about one subject very important the resurrection of jesus christ the resurrection of jesus christ you see the the christianity is not a blind faith the christianity is a faith based on evidence we have evidence that jesus is alive jesus was raised from the tomb Jesus was raised from the dead hallelujah that miracle was possible because God who is the creator who is the originator for everything that we see or not see he intervened and he raised Jesus his son for his glory from the dead right amen amen you see mission is more important than people when i say that you see peter and john didn't say oh brothers and sisters because uh, this and that that's why it happened and they said don't look at us we didn't do nothing here it's not because of our wisdom because of our power because of our knowledge it's because of one thing because of Jesus Christ that he's alive and because he's alive this person was healed hallelujah hallelujah tonight because Jesus is alive even though we are not a thousand people here even though we are not as many as we were on Sunday night Jesus is still alive. Jesus is still here. Jesus still can uh, uh, heal the sick. Jesus can still uh, change the uh, people's life, can break the chain, can break the bondage, because his power is with him to transform people, to restore people, to redeem people, to put them and pull them from the darkness and put them in the in the kingdom of light hallelujah hallelujah you see the mission of uh, of peter and john was not to praise themselves but for one thing to praise jesus christ hallelujah whatever you do whatever you you are called to do one thing in your mind and in my mind in all of our mind to be always the praises belong to Jesus Christ he is worthy he died for us he suffered the cross he suffered uh, the, the death for us so he is in control and he deserves all the praises hallelujah now when uh, they were persecuted the Bible said they were put in jail for one night. They were interrogated. They were uh, constrained not to say anything about Jesus and about his resurrection. You know what uh, their prayer was? Let's observe this prayer. And uh, uh, verse 23 from uh, Acts uh, chapter 4, verse 23 and being let go they went to their own companions and reported all that the chief priests and elders had uh, said to them so this is persecution one on one right now 24 so when they heard that 
they raised their voice to God with one account and said, Lord, you are God who made heaven and earth and the sea and all that is in them, who by the mouth of your servant David have said, why did the nation rage and the people plot vain things? The kings of the earth took their stand and the rulers were gathered together against the Lord and against his Christ. For truly against your holy servant Jesus, whom you anointed both Herod and Pontius Pilate, with the Gentiles and the people of Israel were gathered together to do whatever your hand and your purpose determined before to be done. You see, this is allowed by God. Persecution is allowed. And they didn't complain about persecution. Watch what they said. They said... Um, now, Lord, took on their threats. So took their threats and grant to your servants that with all boldness they may speak your word. Grant or enable your servants. You see, that's why I put the title for this message, Enabled Servants. Not enabled, you know, uh, uh, you know, people would say, oh, uh, big muscle people, big uh, uh, knowledge people, big guru or something. No, no. When, uh, when God is talking about the, uh, his, uh, he, uh, you know, his kingdom, he said, you are my servant. You see the humility? We are not about our own. We don't represent our own. We represent him. We serve him. Hallelujah. Enable, grant us uh, the boldness that may we speak uh, about your word. You see, when they got persecution, they didn't say, God, please shut up all the elders, all the rulers, all the saduki, all the people that are against us. Oh, put them in a corner, put them in a um, whatever, send them out from Jerusalem. They didn't say that. They said, Lord, give us more boldness. You know, after persecution, you ask for more boldness? You were in jail because you were bold. You were put in uh, maybe, uh, you know, in a corner because you were uh, standing, because you were talking, because you were preaching. And they didn't say, Lord, oh, we are afraid. What to do? We may be quiet. We may be, uh, be uh, silent and this and that. No, no, no. They said, Lord, give us power. Enable us, grant us the Holy Spirit so we can be bold about your word, about your gospel. Amen? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You see what happened uh, on Sunday night and what can happen tonight as well is to get that boldness to stay firm, to stand firm for Jesus, not in our own accounts, but in his power, through the Holy Spirit, hallelujah. When we are connected to him, when we are close to the Lord, when, you, when we are uh, seated in him, we get power, we get uh, we fed by, by his word, and then we can stay firm. Amen, amen. So the what is stand firm. The how is through the Holy Spirit. Through Jesus, we can stay firm. Hallelujah. And look what they said. By stretching your hand to heal and, that, uh, and do signs and wonders may be done 
in the name of your holy servant Jesus you see what they said more wonders more people to be healed more, more people to hear the gospel oh uh, Lord help us you know what happened from the uh, Pentecost to this miracle another 2,000 people was added to the um, uh, disciples of Jesus Christ they said here they were about 5,000 3,000 was added on the Pentecost another 2,000 after a few days why? because God was choosing to work through the name of Jesus Christ wonders and signs and heal the sick and, and do miracles in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And look at that, what happened in verse 31. And I want to conclude tonight and I want to let more time for prayer. You see, they were baptized with the Holy Spirit a few days before. But after their prayer and during their prayer, verse 30, 31 says this, and when they had prayed, they place where they uh, were assembled together, the place where they were assembled together was shaken and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and they spoke the word of God with boldness. You see, on their prayer, what happened? The whole place, the whole room or the whole house where they were, were shaken. You know that uh, God can shake this place tonight? Oh, they can shake your uh, heart. They can shake your soul. They can shake your spirit. They can shake your whole being. And they can pour the Holy Spirit on you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. You see, the fulfillment of the Holy Spirit is not one-time event. Yes, the baptism in Holy Spirit is one. But to be filled and refilled and refilled with the Holy Spirit can happen every day and every time you pray may the Lord bless all of us with this power of the Holy Spirit to be filled to, uh, to experience and not only experience as one time but to be filled and work for the, uh, for, uh, for, for the Lord work for God and for his kingdom and we want this to happen in every one of us let's stand up and uh, maybe the worship uh, uh, team can come up here and like uh, uh, brother Christy said um, we want to pray for the sick we want to pray for people that has needs in their soul in their heart in their spirit and um, we want not to rush the, tonight but we want to allow time allow the Holy Spirit to touch everyone if you feel that you need prayer if you feel that something it's uh, uh, stucking and uh, blocking your 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 uh, your uh, your uh, way your your uh, your advancement to get closer to the to the to to Jesus to to the to the church or to to the word of God or something that is blocking your way let's come and pray let's come and say Jesus I want to repent tonight I want to repent for this for this for this and I let the Holy Spirit and I ask the Holy Spirit to touch your heart and to tell you what you need to change from what things need to be changed in your heart what need, uh, things need to ch be changed in your car in your room in your um, uh, playlist in your music, in your reading, in your books, uh, in your uh, relationship, in anything that is not according to his will. Let that happen tonight. Let that uh, with a prayer, with the with with the with the intercession one for other and say, Lord, 
tonight is your night and I want to be my night I want to be touched by you I want to be refreshed by you I want to experience that presence of the Holy Spirit I want to um, uh, to be touched by you I want a special anointing tonight I know you still can feel people I, I know you still can feel hearts and minds do it tonight and uh, I would like to ask uh, while uh, uh, before the, the worship team starts singing uh, let's uh, see if uh, there is other prayer request we pray for brother Eugen if uh, any other people or uh, um, young people or um, or anybody tonight or maybe somebody sends you a text message or a, or another request for prayer let's uh, uh, say that in front of the lord he can touch he can make a change in some people's life and let's do it tonight with prayer if there is any other prayer request tonight For Romania mission trip yes there is a need for power there is need to for door to be open in the mission trip there is a, a need for uh, people to be transformed to uh, hear the, the the gospel for uh, people who's doing the mission to be emboldened to be enabled to be granted power from the Holy Spirit hallelujah there is any other prayer request Amen. Healing in the uh, Eli body. May God grant this request to Eli. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Any other hands? Any anything by uh, uh, raising your hands? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let let the worship team sing. And if you feel to come up front for special prayer, come up front. If you feel to kneel down, kneel down. If you feel to pray during the, the, the worship, pray. Let the Holy Spirit move. Let the Holy Spirit shake your hand, shake your heart, shake your spirit, shake this place. In Jesus' name, amen.